thank you and good morning. I appreciate um, there's been a lot of very useful information provided uh, over the course of the morning session. And we are also running a little bit ahead of schedule, so I'll do my utmost to keep it that way. I was asked to provide um, a presentation on the, the importance of commencement notices, in fact, the regulatory, the building control regulations and the regulatory regime in respect of building control as part of um, this morning's CPD day. As always, the department is delighted to participate in the, in the ongoing and provision of continuing professional development in the area of building control to further the objectives of um, building control reform and uh, advancement in the state. I'll start, I won't go into this um, flowchart in too much detail, but it, it does, it is a useful um, oversight of the regulatory and legislative framework in which we operate, that the building control system is levied under principle or primary law. It does have a number of distinct components. There have already been CPD days uh, on a variety of these topics. However, it is in the central column of uh, the building control regulations, 1997 to 2021, that we'll be speaking to primarily this morning, focusing on the position of the commencement notice and the seven day notice in our regulatory environment. And I do refer to a commencement notice uh, for, for the remainder of this morning. Uh, um, the, the provisions that apply in respect of the seven day notice, what's sometimes termed as the fast track commencement notice, also applies. From an overarching sense, every document and every process that is specified under the building control regulations has a function and a purpose, an important function and purpose, which is relevant to, to the particular document. Well established in the state and in our regulatory regime is the fire safety certificate for design compliance with part B to the second schedule of the building regulations. Mm -hmm. Equally, the disability access certificate has an important role in respect of um, compl demonstrating compliance for proposed works with part M of the second schedule. Equally, the commencement notice has an important role and function in notifying local authorities, initially as designed under the building control regulations, to the imminent commencement of works that allows the local authority to specify and coordinate inspections. Over time, with the development and advancement of legislative provisions under the Building Control Act, these processes have become enhanced and strengthened. If we take a step backwards and look at the initial implementation of the Building Control Act in 1990, with its enabling provisions coming into effect in 1992, the Building Control Regulations and the Building Regulations in 1991, giving rise to the functional requirements of the Building Regulations, and of the administrative provisions, specifically at that time, the commencement notices and the fire safety certificates, along with the necessary registers of, um, of building control activity. The commencement notice has existed since the earliest days of implementation of the building control process. They are not new. They have had a function and a role for the past 30, 32 years. They were consolidated and revised in 1997, with the 19, coming into effect mid-1998, with new forms of, uh, a new form of notice of commencement notice and a modification of the like, regulatory provisions outlining where the notice is applicable as, in the same way as the fire safety certificate. Over the course of time, we can see that the uh, scale of construction works did uh, substantially increase uh, the earliest statistics I can find um, highlighted 9,800 commencement notices um, on the first year of operation of the building control regulations, um, escalation to, to just under 34,000 um, around the 2006 mark. If you can move forward to the, what I can't, I don't really want to divide it into first and second half of the building control act, it fits nicely and neatly on a screen, but from 2007, 
uh, onwards to, to current date, there is certainly um, has certainly been an acceleration of um, of provision of the the requirements of the Building Control Act. The Act of 2007 did, in fact, bring in to effect the uh, registration of specific titles: the architects, the building surveyors, the quantity surveyors. It pro made provision in that Act modifying the Building Control Act 1990 for further enhancement of the building control regulations themselves, giving legislative um, provision for the likes of seven-day notices, revised fire safety certificates, disability access certificates. Those documents came into effect in 2009, strengthening and enhancing the, the commencement notice process again, giving a me mechanism for the, what's termed as the fast tra track process. Come 2014, perhaps um, one of the most fundamental amendments to the building control process, um, the strengthening of building control um, and what's termed as the building control reform. The provision of the commence notice with additional documentation, citing the assigned certifiers, those registered uh, or chartered professionals who are com competent and qualified uh, to design, inspect and certify works. The requirement of the, the statutory certain compliance and completion um, and the establishment of the building control management project. Through 2015, the provision of the commencement notice with the opt-out declaration. 2018, the decoupling of the disability access certificates from the fire safety certificates to specify and focus the requirements of um, the DAC pursuant to Part M. And the strengthening of market surveillance 2021 and the modification of the building control amendment uh, regulations 2021 for the provision of online assessment and application of fire certs and DACs. And the amendments in 2022 to the Building Control Act 2007 um, by virtue of the Regulation of Building Works and Providers Act, which also established Siri and a statutory footing, all part and parcel in the process of, the, of building control reform, and all the time um, with a, a substantial number of commencement notices being received by local authorities on an annual basis. It's useful to take a step back from the, the legislative provisions. They are applied locally, but they have national remit. The commencement notices, if we, just, if we focus on them as a distinct two of the other processes, the, fire, the likes of the fire safety certificate in its application, it replies to some works set out under Articles 11, 1 and 11, 2 of the Building Control Regulations. The commencement notices, are far more expansive applying even where a fire safety certificate is not applicable to works. In fact, it's, it could be reasonably said that most construction works falling under the building regulations would require a fire safety certificate. The notice itself, commence notice or seven day notice, it is a critical part of the building control process. It allows, allows a local authority to carry out risk assessment of the, of the works to, to allow um, inspection plans and programs to be developed. It links to other parts of, of operation of the, of the relevant local authority. There can be linkages to the likes of planning permissions um, to, to, to developments of roads and water infrastructure. It is an economic indicator of construction activity in the local authority. Ronan has already given um, an oversight of the the, the scope and use of BCMS data by a variety of state agencies. And for the for works that have a <clears throat> that require a commencement notice with additional documentation that require that assigned certifier inspection oversight, they link directly to the requirement for a certificate of compliance and completion. We've already heard uh, a lot of information, seen a lot of information about the, the forms of the notice, the documentation which is, uh, uh, that accompanies it, the risk assessment. I'm not going to go repeat and go into detail, but just to give the, the overarching um, view of the documentation. The commencement notice itself is a compilation of essential information relevant to the building regulations, information which allows the local authority to carry out that, that fundamental risk assessment. The quality of the information is important. It is a crowdsourced um, system. The, the information provided by design certifiers, assigned certifiers, by building owners, uh, by personnel operating as a creator of the document to provide the information. 
the analysis of the information or the, 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 the number of state agencies that rely on the information, Ronan has already gone into in a useful level of information. The CSO, um, the Department of Housing, other agencies do uh, look at this information. The information that's provided is uh, critical to uh, a national oversight of construction activity. The online assessment. It's not a random assemblage of questions relating to building regulations. They are critical, uh, specific and pointed. They're a prompt for designers who've designed buildings to fully consider the ramifications of the construction which, which they are undertaking. Questions are raised from part A through to part M of the building regulations, specifying and, and giving hints and prompts has this building been designed in accordance with the building regulations? Ronald again provided a very useful um, overview of the assessment of part of uh, the question on part C to the building regulations. Um, is the building in a high rate on risk area? Um, the questions, the answers that are derived from it can lead directly to, uh, to a heightened risk priority uh, for inspection. The documents that can be provided as part of the the process again and it's, it is, has been succinctly stated section six it's it's not necessarily thrown at the bottom of the commencement notice form set out in the schedule to the building control regulations but the the, the documents the drawings the details that are provided again provide and prompt information with to, to the design of the building Buildings are complex. They are getting more complex due to the variety of requirements that are specified under the building regulations and the technical guidance documents that support them. From fire, structure, ventilation, radon, um, energy requirements, there are more and more systems going into them, but they have to be designed to work as a holistic, uh, in a holistic fashion on completion of the building. Designed in isolation, they will only work in isolation. Designed holistically, they will work holistically. So that schedule of documents is specified. It, is, it should be aligned to the complexity of the building. The, the more straightforward the design, the more straightforward the list. The more complex the design, the more complex the list. Outlining the documents that are available to the designer or to be made available. And again, at that, the, the emphasis um, has already been provided this morning that the, the, at the earliest stages of design, those documents which are relevant should be available. So for before the foundations are cut, there should be a site investigation or site investigation documents made available. The same for foundation calculations, etc. The same can be said for the drawings aligning to the specifications and the design of the building and works. The more finesse that's provided and the more focus on these these steps and stages the easier it is to validate um, john has already gone through the the validation processes and the reasons why we can be invalidated those are statutory processes set out under the building control regulations article 10 they are a series of steps and questions that must be followed the, the more concise the more coherent the more precise the documentation, the easier that process can be at a local authority level. Indeed, it can be said if there is a requirement for, for further information that is and that is warranted under the, uh, the assessment by local authorities, that further information, it has to be provided. It can lead, it, it leads to, to delays in, in process. The more coherent the, the application, the, the, then the more likely it is to be validated, leading to um, efficiencies in construction. The building control regulations, they're there to provide administrative oversight. They provide a system of administration and control in relation to the commencement of works, to the design of works, to the inspection and certification of works. But all and actually leading to the same objective, compliance with the building regulations. Richard has already gone through the specifications for drawings contained and attached to commencement notice documentation. 
but the drawings are related to building regulation requirements, that of structure or fire, accessibility or moisture or energy. That the drawings have to allow and specify how the works will comply with this set of documents, with this set of legal requirements. It's not just a notice saying the works are starting, it's a notice to say the works are starting and have been designed and built, and that the construction will be adequate and fit for purpose to ensure the health and safety of the individuals who will work and live in the buildings on its completion. The importance of the commencement notice as part of this process cannot be, um, can, cannot be overstated. It again does give that, that, that commencement process and it does lead to the, the, the certification by whatever means of the works at the end. The obligations and responsibilities for compliance with the building regulations does as always lie with the owner, the builder, the designers of the works. And the building control regulations are there to support and to provide that, uh, that level of oversight in respect of it. It's been a, a brief oversight to the, the requirements of the building regulations. Um, they are, the comments notes on the documentation is important to the ongoing works and in compliance with the building regulations. If you're there, we've provided an email if there are, if you wish to keep up to date with um, changes to building standards as they may come about um, into, the, into the coming months and years, it's a useful link to have for any future works. Thank you.